So one of the ways they will ask you about simple harmonic motion is they throw you a scenario, any random scenario, and they will ask you to try to decide whether it's simple harmonic motion or not and yeah, things like that. We'll see how, we'll see how. Kyo, you have a very interesting scenario. Oh, I want to do this experiment already. Okay, okay. Uh, first step, let's define simple harmonic motion. Pay attention, this is two marks, so you need to remember there's two key points for simple harmonic motion. What is it? Uh? One thing is your acceleration proportional to negative x. Describe in sentence. Okay, so you say oh, acceleration. I'm going to skip myself and write through this whole thing. There, the whole thing, out. So acceleration proportional to displacement from equilibrium position. That's probably, probably your first mark, okay? This is the M1 mark for here to here. Just talking about the proportional relationship. Then the second mark will come from the idea of acceleration in opposite direction to displacement. By the way, uh, I write here A, but you write the whole thing. Uh. <laughs> I'm just shortcutting here, so the video is not ten super, super, super long. But the second mark will come from the detail here on where is acceleration pointing. Is it always to the middle? Is it in opposite direction to X? So you must mention that also. And this is the M1 mark. Uh, be careful. Uh. M means you have to talk about the M1 mark. Only you can get your A1 mark. There are a few more ideas in the mark scheme. Let me show you. So this is paper SC, very useful. MJ11 is summer 11, paper 4. Question 1. Sorry, variant 1, question 3. So the nice thing about paper SC is you see this pink color thing, you can click MS mark scheme. Then you jump there already. Okay, let's see what is this about. So your first mark is yeah, as the proportionality relationship. But then you see they also want another mark. Now here's more ideas for you. You can they can accept when you say acceleration is always directed towards a fixed point. Means acceleration always, always pointing towards equilibrium position. Or you can say, my favorite one, acceleration is opposite direction to displacement. Talking about the negative sign. Both one also can lah. Alright, and as a warning, oh by the way, there's an ER in paper SC. Very conveniently you can jump to it. It's the examiner report. It tells you what to be careful of. Basically, it's like hex for every question. So go and read it lah, if there is one. So you see, um, it is important definition is state precisely. Problem is, a lot of students will say distance instead of displacement. So you should use the word displacement. Uh, don't say distance. You might lose marks there. Okay, so that's the first hack. Hex, I call them. Hmm. Let's look at our scenario for today. A tube has mass and cross-section area. Floating in the liquid. Wow. And then you push it down, is it? I think so. I don't know. My thing got... Ah, the tube is displaced and then released. The tube oscillates vertically and it's shown like that. Wow, theory shows that this acceleration has a formula, this. Okay, first, let's enjoy the beauty of what's happening here. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Oh my goodness. It's so pretty. But what's happening here is, if you ever played in a bathroom or swimming pool, if you have a tube, okay, let's say this tube is at rest, it's at equilibrium position. Okay, this is our equilibrium position. It's not bobbing, it's not moving. Why? Le? Because there is firstly weight of this whole thing. And there is also the what are uh, what is the force when you are in a liquid known as the up thrust force. Uh, actually we can yeah, you up thrust. We learned this in AS chapter 5, up trust. And now we're not going to derive the whole equation here. But if you really want to, you can go and derive the equation they gave you. But up trust is, up trust is rho vg, yeah, those kind of things. Anyway, that's beside the point. So you have a displacement here. And once you displace it off, the weight is still the same. But your up trust is going to be much bigger because now you're deeper in the fluid. Hey, this looks like the spring stuff and all that. So now you have a net force. And if you let go already, you're going to have an acceleration upwards. And thus begins the oscillation. Okay? So, nah, I'm not going to not gonna show the whole derivation. It's going to take, like, make the video forever. But yeah, if you're curious, you are wanna, you want a challenge, try proof this equation. How do you get this? But what we, they want us to do is explain how you can use this expression Mm, and say that that tube is moving in simple harmonic motion. Wow, two marks on how to explain. Now this skill uh, always got a lot of explain, explain one, uh, like paper, paper four. Wow, I keep saying paper two. This is paper four now. Lots of explanations to do. 
Here's how you can do it. First thing you already defined just now, acceleration is proportional to negative x. Can you see this pattern inside here? Can ah? A is some constant mu times x. Okay, so this would be general equation would be some constant now. Okay, we call our constant omega times x. So here will be a equals to something times x. Now the question is, are all those highlighted stuff constants or not? If they're constants, then yes, it is simple harmonic motion. Follows the pattern now. So to conclude, you can say L A is what uh, cross section area. Rho is density of water, G is 9.81, mass not changing. Okay, so the first thing you want to say is what are the constants? So you say oh, area, rho, g, and n are all constants. So if they're constants, that means this, can we say this? Yes, we can say that. So acceleration is proportional to x. There. But it's only one mark. Where's the other mark from? Remember, simple harmonic motion, what's the definition? There's two key points. Proportionality and the direction of acceleration. So you must also say, oh, because we have a negative sign here, right? So confirm this one is simple harmonic motion. And you can say, the negative sign will tell you what? Will indicate to you that what and what is in opposite direction? Displacement and acceleration is in opposite direction. Ah, this is the answer that will get you all the full marks. I'm going to be excited and put an exclamation point. So if you check out the mark scheme, let's go back to this question mark scheme. MS is mark scheme. So yeah, 2B1 marks is how you can tell, uh, interpret this kind of question. You must talk about the constants. So, proportional. And the negative sign is associated with a fixed point or opposite direction to displacement. Both are B1 marks. B are independent marks. Okay? So you just say, oh, okay, B1, B1. Ding, ding, ding. Two marks. Oi. Yeah. Okay. So first step, they will often ask you this kind of shape, like this kind of question. You see a lot of them like this one. They throw your equation. Is this a simple harmonic motion or not? You explain. Now, the next part is, so... Okay, it's going to oscillate, point, 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 up and down. The tube has a cross-section area. Okay, they're giving you values. Floating in water, density. Okay, this is density. Calculate the mass of the tube that will give you this frequency F. Wow. You're like, eh, this equation don't have F or how to find. Can we find F? So stay calm a bit and remember... The omegas. What is the general form of the equation? Acceleration equals to oh, oh I already write up there. Ah, yeah. And then you compare the equation. Compare this omega form with your general up general form up there, and you can decide and say like, oh, all the constants, right, equals to this constant law. Because remember, omega is our constant. So you can say, all right. Therefore. Omega square equals to the, all the bunch of those stuff, A, rho, G, M. But we need to involve frequency somehow, because if not, we need to calculate omega. Ma. So, I mean, you could say la, 2 pi over T, but why not, instead of 2 pi over T, you say, oh yeah, omega is can be in terms of frequency as well. So you say 2 pi F, because frequency is 1 over T. So A, rho, G, and very nice. Now we can have an equation to calculate our mass because they're looking for the mass. What mass will have this oscillation? Okay, so I'm going to zoom in here. Now, let us rearrange to find mass. If you are lazy to rearrange, you can just skip this part. But if you want to be hardworking, the proper way is to re rearrange the equation first. Huh? So first things first, M equals to A rho G over 2 pi F square. Then you plug in all your values to see what should the mass of this thing be. So as not acceleration, cross section area 4.5. Hang on a second, this is cm square. Must remember to change to meter square. So 4.5 times 10 to the negative 
2, that's a centi, but square, uh, don't forget, because cm square. Uh. Times density of the liquid, so 1 times 10 to the 3. Is that in kgm? Okay, SI unit. Mm. 9.81 meter per second. Divide by 2 pi, what's the frequency? 1.5 hertz square. Okay, so if you calculate everything, you will get a very interesting number, 0, 0, 0, 4, 9, 6, 9, 4, 9, 7. Lah. But this in kg, ah, you better double check what unit they want you in. Okay, don't write the wrong units because you might lose a mark unnecessarily. So if I want to convert this to kg, that's kilo. So 1, 2, 3. Okay, this is the old school way of uh, doing your decimal bounce here, bounce there one. Alright, so you can say 50 grams. I'm just going to write out my full working here. But in the final answer, I can be 2 or 3SF. Sure, I'll do 2SF. So that's 50 grams. Now you look at this thing, 4 marks. Ooh, we hardly see 4 marks in AS. But A2, you have 4 marks. Where do the 4 marks come from? It's actually about you showing your working. So the first mark comes if you know how to compare. Do you know how to compare or not? Here. This one is a C1 mark. Second, do you know that omega is 2 pi f or not? You do? Yes. C1 mark. Number three, can you plug in all the values correctly based on your equation? Equation must be correct, values must be correct. That's a C1 mark. And of course, the first one is accuracy mark, ah, A1. So if you're thinking, oh, oh miss, these are all C1 marks. Ah. Means I don't need to write all the steps, also can. Ah. That is extremely, extremely risky. Yes, I know C1 marks are compensatory. You don't show them, but you imply you know it. You can get the mark, but do not just write 50 grams and just plug everything in your calculator. Show every single step. Something wrong, I uh, means all your marks gone. Okay, so you see, if C1 is here, they're looking for the equation. C1 is here, they're looking for you correct doing a correct substitution here. Now, before we move on to the next question, I'm going to take a peek at the error report. To remind you that you can see what errors people usually make. Make sure you don't make those errors. Okay. First one. Wow, this is a bit too big. Candidates realize that these are constants, so the estimation must be proportional. But the significance of the minus sign or was not very well understood. So you must mention why is there a minus sign that's because opposite direction between A and X. You want to be a good candidate, right? So B1. And the next part, the calculation part, people usually can do. But please remember to convert your units. See, they already warn you. Uh, people always forget to convert CM to M. So make sure you do that. All right. So that's all for this question. There are a few more like this. Go try it out. Lah.